So what you've seen previously in these uh, videos is um, me going around the country, all the way from Scotland, Lundy Island, um, the southwest, and collecting soils um, from the different sites, and then growing the same seeds um, in the different soils, and having a look at how the heather grows um, in terms of how fertile those soils were. So um, the next stage is to have a look at what um, chemicals might be in those soils in terms of nitrogen and phosphorus, which are important for the fertility and how the, the heather might grow. So what I need to do first is I need to get rid of all the things I don't need in the plants, which include all the organic matter, all the, the green and the browns, all the pigments. And to do that, I need to use a very strong acid. It's sulfuric acid. All right, the next step, once I've taken the, the digest, is what it's called, um, I get this, which has had some um, deionized water added. So in here, we've got nine different samples, which would be from nine different sites. So they'd have different amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus in them. Right, so next, once I've taken out my digest from there, and I've got them all in the fridge because they need to be stored at low temperature, I start looking at um, the ways that I can test how much nitrogen and phosphorus is in my sample. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test phosphorus. And um, the way I do that is by using a chemical in here. It is called, at the moment, nitrogen working reagent. But in fact, what it's called is, if I get all my notes, um, it's got in it um, borate, which is sodium tetraborate. Um, it's got water. It's got sodium sulfate. It's got something called orthophaldehyde. It's got a cocktail of all sorts of things in it, which is why it's toxic and harmful. And the way it works, which is why it's kept in the dark, is it reacts, um, once it's in the light, it starts reacting with the, the nitrogen and it'll start to fluoresce. Um, so that's what I've done. So these are ones I prepared earlier because it takes three hours to do. So I'm not gonna do it for you now. Um, but here, you can see what happens. So that's fluorescing. And it'll fluoresce differently depending on how much nitrogen is in there. So here you can see one which will be from Scotland, and here you can see one that will be from Northumberland, and already, even just by eye, you can see that there's a difference in the amount of nitrogen, which is what I was hoping to see. I really enjoy going around um, different sites because you, you get to go around um, in different weathers, you get to see all sorts of different things, um, you get to see the whole of the Great Britain, and it's amazing to do. This is different, um, you're using chemicals which uh, quite interesting, exciting, and they react in different ways, and you know they're dangerous, so chemistry is always fun. Um, but you're not outside. Right, the next thing I need to do, once I've got the numbers off this, is to do phosphorus. So I need to keep that in the dark because it keeps reacting in the light. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how to do um, a phosphorus analysis. I need to get gloved up because I don't want to get any of these chemicals on my hands. I'm going to take my, my digest that I got from my different sites from the fridge. I'm going to take a very accurate pipette. So this is one from my Scotland site. These will all be in acid cleaned um, with hydrochloric acid and water, deionized water, to make sure there's nothing in there whatsoever. Um, again, it takes days to do, but it's hopefully worth doing in the end. Right, so I'm going to take out 0.2 mils of my digest. And those are my samples. Then what's critical about these is that I need to make sure I do it at exactly the right time. And um, last, I've done it twice before. And the first time I did it, you've got to sit here and you've got to put it in at exactly the right second. So I'm sat here with a stopwatch. And um, I was um, deionizing some water over there, and I completely forgot about it. So it overflowed, and um, I could hear this dripping. Oh, great. So um, every minute, I had to run over there, wipe up some, come back here and do that, run over there. Absolute nightmare. The second time I did it, I knocked over a bottle of dye. So <laughs> I had to do the same thing. So what I'm doing with these two samples, while keeping them out of the air, because, of course, with looking at the, the the, um, the pollution that I'm looking at in terms of nitrogen, 
it's all around us anyway, so I need to make sure I don't keep them open to the air where there is nitrogen anyway. Um, I'm going to add the actual chemicals which cause the reactions. So what I need to do is I need to add 0.6 mils of what's called reagent A, which is um, it's called ammonium molybdate, and it's got another acid in it again. Um, this is just to, to draw out the, the phosphorus that we're looking at. So there's a the stopwatch. So this is the second chemical. This reacts with light as well. Um, it's essentially just a dye. Uh, it's kind of a blue color. Now I need to add 0.6 mils of that. And it turns a very nice color. Um, this is the dye which is reacting with the phosphorus. And depending on how much phosphorus is in there, the dye will turn a different shade of green. After 40 minutes, um, you'll already be able to see a difference in color. The one from Scotland will be lighter than the one from Northumberland, in theory, if that's what, how it's worked. Um, and what I'll do once that's happened after 40 minutes is I'll again get numbers from that and to do that I use this machine up here. This is one I'm going to do just for you because I haven't left it for 40 minutes. Um, but you draw it through and it'll tell you up there how much phosphorus is in there. Plants need phosphorus and they need nitrogen to grow. Um, but they need different amounts. And if you have high nitrogen or low phosphorus, then each can limit each other. And the plant might not grow effectively, depending on which one is which, which is why we're measuring both. A finished product, what well, right at the end of all this research, a massive thesis, hopefully, um, that will be um, read by professors who know the subject inside out, have to sit down for four hours, talk them through it. And hopefully at the end, they'll call me doctor and that'll be it.